I'm Chip from the Digital Grandstand and welcome back to another review of this past mid-season point of the 2017 F1 Championship. This time it's the turn of the newest team on the grid, those cheerful guys from the US of A. Haas F1 team had a fairly solid first F1 year in 2016. No one expected them to mix it up with the established midfield teams, but mainly thanks to the occasional brilliance of Grosjean, they did just that, especially in the first half of the season. A not great but reasonable budget meant they did fall a bit behind in the development race since August, but they ended up the season 8th out of 11 teams last year. As for this season, the standings do seem to suggest they made a step forward, they are currently P7 out of 10. However, this position is more of a result of the woes McLaren are encountering in 2017. Both Grosjean and the new kid on the team Magnussen had solid races as well as ones where they threw big results away throughout this season. The Haas machine is extremely unpredictable, seemingly changing characteristics almost race by race. Grosjean had both higher peaks but also lower lows than his teammate and that kind of shows in the standings. The Frenchman has 18 points to Magnussen's 11. The biggest issue with Grosjean is that his driving style requires total confidence in the brakes, which is a not so strong trait of the Haas car. Canada, Azerbaijan and Britain are prime examples of the brakes taking good results out of Roman's grasp. However, when he had the confidence in the package, the Frenchman delivered big time. His whole Monaco weekend was almost flawless and in Austria only the leading Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull machines finished ahead of him, which bodes very well with his ambitions of moving to a leading team in the near future. On the other side of the garage, Magnussen also had an up and down few months. Maybe it's his relatively inexperience in F1 in general and at Haas in particular, but he doesn't seem to race at his teammates level. Biggest flaw in his arsenal does seem to be the qualifying form. More often than not, this left him in a difficult position while Roman was some way ahead on the grid. Couple of races that were very much in Kevin's pocket were the ones in Austria and Great Britain. At the Red Bull ring he was driving really well but the car let him down while at Silverstone his poor quality performance hit him hard. With all that in mind, my rating for the Haas F1 team is 6.5 out of 10. But they should move up a notch until November. Although, it is really hard to judge where they can go from here. The team's unique collaboration with Ferrari does seem to get copied next year with Sauber, to an extent, so it should make for a great semi-rivalry. The team won't fight for wins or championships, despite some remarks made by Gene Haas this August. They are a good midfield team with the potential to get to the level of Williams, maybe even Force India. But that will take a while. Hopefully they will get involved more hands-on with the development race in these remaining races and score some more points. Despite what they say, the present and future of the team does look fairly bright. Drivers changes for next year? I don't think so. Unless a miracle happens and Ferrari comes calling for Grosjean, a scenario he is very much praying for, both the Frenchman and the Dane will stay put in 2018. So there you have it, the midterm report for the Haas F1 team. Do you disagree with my view? If so, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more F1 related content and come chat to me on Twitter at chip underscore DGS. Thanks for watching, I've been Chip from the Digital Grandstand and I'll catch you later.